In this lesson, we look at what's called a discrete or a continuous domain. And the first example gives a picture of a discrete domain. And remember, domain is all the x values. And what it means to be discrete is that there's only certain numbers in the interval. So if you look here, only the integers are being included, not all numbers. So if I say integers from 1 to 5, that's different from all numbers 1 to 5. Speaking of all numbers 1 to 5, that would be an example of a continuous domain. And a continuous domain is when you can include numbers between the other values. So for example, the numbers between 1 and 2 don't count, but here they do, and that's the difference between discrete and continuous. Continuous because it continues all the way through to the end of the set. So we've got this function, y equals 16x, and usually when you're trying to figure out if something's discrete or continuous, you have to look at the story behind it. And most of the times in math, we're just focused on the numbers. With discrete and continuous, you have to focus on the story. So y represents the cost in dollars, and x represents the number of tickets. So we're going to graph the function. Well, and since I don't have any negative x values, I can just start here at the first quadrant. And when I plug in 0, hmm, let me see what my scale could be. It looks like I can go by 8s, and this I'll go by 1s. So when I plug in 0, I get 0. 1 gives me 16. 2 gives me 32. 3 gives me 48. And 4 gives me 64. Now before you connect it, I want you to think. Can you connect it? Can you have 1.5 tickets. No. So you can't connect them. So you just leave them as dots. I know we're so used, we have this uncontrollable desire to connect all of our dots because we've been graphing lines for so long, but we're actually not going to connect them because the domain is discrete. And it says to explain why, so I'll say because you can't have a fraction of a ticket. So I'm either having one ticket or two tickets or three tickets. I can't have a portion of a ticket. In this example, we're going to try it again. A cereal bar contains 130 calories. Sorry for the spelling mistake. Um, the number C of calories consumed is a function of the number of B bars eaten. Graph the function. So since I can't have negative calories or I can't have negative bars, I'm going to stay in this um, graph and I'll use theirs. So I'll make B and C. And now I need to figure out my scale. So, hmm... Let's go by 50s. Okay. So if I have no bars, then I obviously have no calories. If I have one bar, then I have 130 calories. So that's like around here. If I have two bars, that's 260. So that's like right there. If I have three bars, that's 390. Four bars is 520. So, all right, so that'll be good. And now, before I do anything, I need to decide whether or not I'm allowed to connect it. Well, can you eat half a cereal bar? Can you have 105 calories? If you want, really wanted to eat half a bar, you absolutely could. So because I can have those fractional amounts... I'm going to connect it, and I'm going to extend it. So in this case, the domain 
is continuous. You conduct an experiment on the speed of sound waves in dry air at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. You record your data in a table. Which of the following is true? Well, the question asks you, or the, the choices ask you what the domain is. So remember, the domain is all the x values or the input values. So the domain is this. And then these will be the range values. So it's down between A and B. So is it discrete or is it continuous? Can you break the domain up into pieces? Could you have three seconds? Could you have seven seconds? Like, could you have values that aren't shown in this table? And the answer is absolutely, right? Time is very fluid. So you can break up and you can have three seconds. So in this case, it is continuous, letter B. If you have any questions about discrete or continuous, Write them down and ask me when you see me next.